This video is sponsored by me. Check out my new channel, Aviation Station, right here. Traveling over our heads at hypersonic speeds beyond Mach 7 lies the future of spy plane technology. This plane can be anywhere in the world in one hour, enter any country unnoticed, and be out before their jets can even get into the sky. This future plane doesn't need a pilot, flies twice as fast as the SR-71 Blackbird, and further development has rumored that it will have equipped hypersonic missiles. And perhaps the most shocking thing about this top secret project is, it could be flying today. This is the son of the Blackbird, the mysterious SR-72. Spy planes have always filled an important role in intelligence gathering. At the start, they were the only way to get a bird's eye view on what was going on over others' borders. And then even then, when satellites became more feasible and technologically advanced, they still had other advantages. They're fast, can be deployed much quicker than orbital cameras, and can avoid being shot down. The SR-71 Blackbird is commonly known as the most famous spy plane, and during its operation, one of the fastest US aircraft in the Air Force. But with the retirement of this older spy plane in 1998, the USA government was left with a bit of a problem. There was now a gap in their ability to spy between spy satellites and slower remote drones. With other nations developing anti-satellite weapons and area denial technologies, as well as good old-fashioned fast jets to intercept normal planes, the USA needed a new spy plane. But this new plane would have to be fast. So fast that it would be able to enter protected airspace, observe and take photos, and perhaps even strike a target well before enemies could detect and intercept it. Something that is currently unavailable from fifth generation fighter jets or any known space programs. Enter the new version of the SR-71 called the Son of the Blackbird. This is what the top secret project is all about. Work on this project was announced to be started way back in 2007. Although likely engineers at the Lockheed Martin Skunk Works started research development many years earlier. Initial rumors were that they were working on a new aircraft that could fly up to Mach 6, or 4,000 miles per hour, or 6,400 kilometers per hour, boy, that is fast, at an altitude of 80,000 feet, or 24,000 meters, triple the height of Mount Everest. This means this plane could reach anywhere in the world in only one hour. To achieve this insane speed, Lockheed is developing a special hybrid jet and rocket engine. In layman's terms, a typical military aircraft would use a turbojet engine to get an aircraft up to a speed of Mach 2.2. Higher than that speed, it's more effective to use a ramjet, up to around about Mach 6. To get over the Mach 6 barrier, air quotes, this requires a new engine design called a scramjet. The challenge is, of course, to create an engine that can perform well at all three speeds. The SR-72 is believed to fix this by having both a turbine engine for low speeds and then converting into a scramjet for higher speeds. Both engines will have the same inlet and exhaust, but different airflows inside of the aircraft. Lockheed is working with Aerojet Rocketdyne to develop this engine called the turbine-based combined cycle propulsion system and has had millions of dollars in funding from NASA. But flying at this speed comes with plenty of challenges. The aircraft would also need to be able to survive flying at such high speeds with aerodynamic heating causing massive gains in surface temperature, hot enough to melt conventional aircraft materials. Thus, this plane will need to be built from a special fabrication of metal and ceramic composites, much like those used in the Space Shuttle. 
but constructing this is also the other challenge. Much of this work will need to employ 3D printing, allowing greater fabrication and technologies unrealizable before, even as soon as five years ago. One such example of using this technology will be 3D printing the cooling system directly inside of the engine. Whilst this might all sound like science fiction, much of this research is actually based on the already flown Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2, or HTV2, that was developed in 2010 for the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA. It managed to fly up to Mach 20 for 9 minutes, which is around 13,000 miles per hour. Unfortunately, the drone actually lost control and the autopilot activated its self-destruct protocol and dived directly into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. But DARPA believes that they have enough research from this project to use it in the SR-72 program and has since cancelled a scheduled third test Mach 320 UAV. Of course, this future version of the SR-72 might not just be used for intelligence gathering and reconnaissance, but deploying weapons as well. Looking at the plane's specs, it might make sense that any design should be built with the ability to strike targets using special hypersonic missiles. Hypersonic aircraft coupled with hypersonic missiles could penetrate denied airspace and strike at nearly any location across a continent in less than an hour, said Brad Lee Land, Lockheed Martin Program Manager. Speed is the next aviation advancement to counter emerging threats in the next several decades. The technology would be a game changer in theatre, similar to how stealth is changing the battle space today. Of course, many people are already starting to write in the comments that there isn't such a weapon technology today. The problem is, is not only would you need to design a missile that could survive the air friction traveling at that speed, but it would also need to be flexible enough to be used. For example, how would this missile turn whilst in flight? Its turning circle would be hundreds of miles wide and it would burn through plenty of fuel. Thus, not only will the SR-72 require plenty of development, but its weapons will require all new technologies as well. But there are other advantages of this design that are actually removing many of the weaknesses of the SR-71. With modern technology, engineers can revisit the mission design of the Blackbird and remove some of the flaws that were put in place thanks to the 1970s technology like the space shuttle-like countdown for launch, or that the fact that the SR-71 took more than a week to turn around for a second flight. And, as well as remove the need for pilots. The SR-72 will have the option of having pilots on board, but it will also be able to fly remotely. Without having any human meat sacks, the plane will be able to perform much greater acceleration and tighter turns with more G-forces, removing the last of the aircraft's great weaknesses. Overall, Lockheed is confident that this conceptual SR-72 hypersonic plane will be able to reach Mach 6, cost only $1 billion, and be flying by 2025. But you might have noticed that throughout this video, I have said future or under development. But if this aircraft is following anything like the development of the original SR-71 development, then it's already flying today. Now, this is where things get a little bit fuzzy, and I hope that you understand that at this point in time, there's a lot of unknowns and also a lot of conspiracy theories to filter through. The original timeline for this project was that the construction would begin in 2018 and that the prototype would fly somewhere in 2025 and then enter active military service by 2030. But here's the funny thing, generally the US military is years ahead of what we know. 
we know that there are rumors of several other spy planes in active service of various prototyping stages, such as the Aurora or those mysterious black triangles. And who's to say that the SR-72, or at least a flying prototype version, is not already in active service, or at least in the active prototype stages, flying somewhere among the desert sands of the US continent. The question is, do you really think that the US government would have left its spy plane defense or offensive role unfilled for the last 20 years after the retirement of the SR-71? Well, I'll let you decide down in the comments below. As for where we are today with the SR-72 progress, so far the US Air Force is still kind of deciding between the SR-72 and the Northrop RQ-180 drone, which has already flown and has greater stealth capabilities, although it's not a hypersonic aircraft and thus built with conventional technologies that are far easier to realize. Lockheed has a way to go developing the prototype and its underlying technologies of the SR-72, Although in 2017, Executive Vice President Rob West commented that we've been saying hypersonics are two years away for the last 20 years, but all I can say is that the technology is mature and we, along with DARPA and the other services, are working hard to get that capability into the hands of our warfighters as soon as possible. It remains to be seen which project will be put into service or which will ever be publicly acknowledged. If you want to know more about the Blackbird SR-1 development, I highly suggest you check out Scott's Aerospace Projects Review's new book all about it. He has accurate diagrams and massive amount of never discussed information from people who have worked on the project. I'll chuck a link down in the description. And if you want to see more content in the world of aviation, you can check out my new channel here, Aviation Station, where I'll be doing more videos on all things aviation, from reviews to industry news, as well as having some much more casual conversation. And special thanks to my Patreons who have supported me on this journey, and all of my fans that have subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, and you keep seeing my videos appear again and again on your YouTube homepage, then now is the time I suggest you jump on board to see much more. Thank you so much for watching.